All right, so I'm here with Sid uh, this afternoon to talk about the um, financial services regulatory compliance issue. I wanted to hear how Sid is talking about it with customers and prospects at events and we're recording it so that we can use it with uh, with sales and you know for sales enablement and potentially with customers as well. Yep, um, this is the page. Um, I made the first start of this, and then uh, I think Cindy, you uh, you helped to uh, to make it better. Um, it's great that it's better because um, it really resonates. Uh, a lot of customers ask like, hey. GitLab, um, I know you're uh, very focused on developers, but are you also, we're in a compliant industry, so can we also use it? And the answer is yes, and a lot of people do, including most of the regulators are using GitLab to stay compliant. And we understand exactly what kind of regulations you're talking about. These are the ones that, uh, that are relevant to you. And Probably one of the biggest things that companies do is segregation of duties. This means that no single person should be able to uh, abuse the system, like wire money to their own account or have some really uh, malicious code out in production. So GitLab helps with that with things like protected branches, merge request approvals, unprotect permission, which means that even the people in the team cannot undo the branch protection, only admin scans, and then two-person access controls will be a future feature that could really help there as well. They also love the security that we uh, provide. Um, I think that the how GitLab helps isn't mapping one-to-one -to, -one to some of these rules. Role-based access controls and revocation of accounts, we have that, but it's not this feature. So I think we should do a bit better here of um, listing what we do. Some of this is already here under auditing, um, but they are very happy to hear that we have um, uh, many of the, uh, the, the, the security technologies they're looking at. Sometimes they already have vendors for this, for uh, static application security testing and dynamic, but many times those vendors um, give them a solution, but it's super hard to integrate into their pipeline. So that's where GitLab comes in. GitLab makes the adoption by developers much, much easier because it's a part of GitLab. And we have took special care so that, that we don't uh, we don't break anybody's work stream. Uh, for example, many vendors, uh, when there's a vulnerable dependency, they just break the build and prevent you from releasing to production. It sounds like a good thing, but it's actually a bad thing. For example, you can have a dependency in production. It might become vulnerable just because a vulnerability is discovered. So now your production contains a vulnerability. Your new code contains a vulnerability. Deploying it won't make anything worse. And there might be like a big outage through some bug you introduced. And now you can't solve that, even though you're not making any security thing worse. Um, so that's not the way to do it. Uh, the way to do it is to start early. So in GitLab, as soon as you push code, we start scanning that code and we give you visibility. Uh, a month from now, in uh, November 22nd, we'll release a security dashboard that gets the CISO and other people visibility in what's out there. And you kind of can agree on a security budget with the teams that work in the company where they have to respond quickly to things that become vulnerable, if they're not showing that they can do that, you can, you could, for example, restrict them and say, hey, from now on, everything you ship has to fix the security issue and, um, until you're uh, back to a normal cadence. Um, the auditing, um, really important that no information gets lost. We were pretty good there. Change management, automated deploys, etc. The, the license management uh, to make sure you don't use any code uh, that's not compliant. So that's, uh, that's all resonating. Um, I think what we, uh, what we should talk about as well is auto remediation. Auto remediation is something we'll launch next year. 
and it's an integrated cycle. If you work at a company that doesn't have auto remediation, when there's a dependency that is widely used, for example, take Heartbleed uh, uh, last year, um, vulnerability is detected. Now you got to fix all the, the all the applications that use it. So you come in on Monday morning, and then suddenly you have 100 applications you should fix. With auto remediation, GitLab fixes all those applications, and that we can do because we know what's vulnerable. We can the source code is in GitLab, fix that, deploy it, and monitor whether the deploy whether the fix is causing any problems, and if needed, revert it and create an issue. End result: you come in in the morning, you have only one issue instead of 100. Only the application where there was a problem with the service level objectives after the fix. Um, another thing we should probably look into is requirements management. Um, really important that you can link anything you change to what you, something you wanted to achieve and of everything you wanted to achieve to be compliant, you're sure that that is tested. Um, I think it's, it's a big benefit that we do monitoring integrated with GitLab so you're not deploying into a black hole. That, helps with the mean time to resolution that's becoming increasingly more important. It's not that you're never going to have any problems, but that if you have a problem, you can respond soon and the regulators are uh, catching up to that. Um, and GitLab's also coming out with incident management last year. That should, uh, that should be good. Um, that will help you uh, reduce your mean time to resolution and keep everyone on the same page and, and communicate effectively. Um, so those are some of the things that I, I, I think are helpful. Okay. Thank you, Sid. I appreciate you sharing your, your pitch, um, basically. Do you get a lot of questions around um, how it might differ for a financial services firm versus healthcare or anything like that? Yeah, I think we should have a, the same thing we do here. We should have something for healthcare. Uh, they, I think there's a lot in common. There's a lot we can reduce, but I think people want to know that, hey, I want to see tax from HIPAA, how it relates to me. And I think our current HIPAA tax is not good enough. Uh, GitLab HIPAA, it's better than it was, uh, a while ago. No, I understand it needs some work. But, but it, it, it needs some work. Okay. Well, should we explain to anybody watching the video that it's almost Halloween? It's <laughs> almost you... Halloween and it's a Friday afternoon. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you, Sid. Appreciate your time. And um, as always, if people have questions around security, they can always reach out to me, Cindy Blake. Be great. Thanks, uh, thanks for um, letting me do my pitch and uh, thanks for improving it so much. It, the page already really resonated with uh, customers. That's, that's great. Thank you. All right. Have a great afternoon. You too. Bye.